In today's lesson, we're going to go over Cavalier's Principle. So by the end of today, you're going to understand and be able to apply Cavalier's Principle. So <clears throat> if two solids are between parallel planes and all cross sections at equal distances from their bases have equal areas, the solids have equal volumes. That's Cavalier's Principle, okay? So basically, if we're looking here at 1 and 1, they're at the same level. They're at the base, right? And if we move up, let's just say this was 2 inches, right? And then here in this area, um, every time we go up, the area is the same, right? So if this was one here, and then this was one half, and this was one half, and then let's just say this was one fourth, and this was one fourth, because as we move up every two inches, the volume is, or the area is the same, then that means that the volume of these two images has to be the same. So if they are the same height and they have the same area, at every level moving up the object, then the volumes of the two images have to be the same. Okay? So um, we're going to answer these questions about the figures below. So we have a cylinder here with a cone in it. Can you see that? And then we have a sphere. So it says, what do you notice about the height of the cylinder versus the height of the sphere? So we've got the height of the cylinder. Let me go ahead and draw a line from the top to the bottom. Looks to me like that's R. So that's the height of the cylinder. Then it says, um, what do you notice about the height of the cylinder versus the height of the sphere? Well, it looks to me like we only have a hemisphere up here. So we would have another R down here, wouldn't we? Do you guys see that? Um, and that's because... We have a hemisphere, we have the top part of the sphere, and then we have the bottom part of the sphere. So if we're looking at the height of the cylinder, um, cylinder is equal to R, but the sphere was equal to 2R. Did everybody see that? Okay. So then the second question says, what do you notice about the height of the cone versus the height of the cylinder? So this time we have the height. The cone and the cylinder are the same height. Aren't, can you guys see that? Because this cone right here is inside that cylinder. I'll see it. So the base, um, from the base to the, um, to the top, and from the base to the top is the same. So this, this time, the height of the cone is equal to R, and the height of the cylinder is equal to R. Okay? Okay, so this next one says, according to Cavalier's principle, which pair of shapes would have equal volumes? A cylinder and a sphere with the same radius? Well, we just saw that's not the same um, because let me go back and show you guys um, if both of these had the same radius from here to there and from here to there they would still not have the same volume because this is four thirds pi r cubed whereas this is um, pi r squared h right okay so then a cone and a cylinder would have equal bases and areas and heights. No, because a cylinder um, is three times a cone, or a cone is one-third a cylinder. A cone and a pyramid with equal base areas and heights. Now that sounds more like it, because a cone is pi r squared h divided by 3, whereas a pyramid is length times width times height divided by 3, right? And it says they have the same base areas and heights. Then a cylinder and a right rectangular prism with equal heights. Well, again, it tells us nothing about our base areas. And that's the key phrase right there, guys, that we have to have the same base areas. Okay. Um, the problem with the cone and the cylinder is, again, that a cone is one-third a cylinder. The problem with the cylinder and a sphere is that a sphere is four-thirds pi r cubed, whereas a cylinder is pi r squared h. Okay. So this is why the answer is three. Or, yeah, that should have been C, right? On y'all's paper. Mm -hmm. Alright, so the next one says, example three, Cavalier's principle also relates to cylinders. The two stacks have the same number of CDs, so they have the same volume, right? So, whether we tip this or not, every CD has the same area, right? Um, and the same height. Uh, so, if we move them, slide them over one another, then they are going to have the same volume. So you try two, says two stacks of 23 quarters are shown. Um, one stack forms a cylinder, but the other stack does not form a cylinder. Why are the volumes of these stacks equal? Use Cavalier's principle to basically consider your thinking. So it's because 
the area and height of each quarter is equal, right? Thus, if there are 23 quarters, the volume's the same, right? Makes sense, yes? Okay. So this next one says a cylinder A and a cylinder B are shown below. What is the volume of each cylinder? So notice here that we have, for we're going to call this one is A and this one's B, right? So we find um, cylinder, whoops, cylinder, that's why L. A is equal to pi times our radius, which would be 2.5, because that's a diameter, squared times our height, which is 14. Um, and that's equal to 87.5 pi, right? Well, cylinder B, likewise, right? That's still pi times our radius is still 2.5 squared. And our height um, from, uh, this is what we would call our height, right? This we would have called slant height, right? And we don't use slant height when we're finding volume. We use height. Okay, so that's still going to be 14. So both of these are 87.5 pi. And that would be centimeters cubed. Okay. So number four, you try. Um, it says two cylinders, each with a height of 50 meters are shown. Which of the following statements about the cylinders P and S are true? Select all that apply. So I'd like you guys to work through these. Pause the video. Come back to me when you're done. So this says if X and Y in the volume of cylinder P is less um, than the volume of cylinder S because cylinder S is slanted. So is that true? Um, and it says true, okay? So if both of these radiuses are equal, so if X is equal to Y, that means our radius are equal, yes? <clears throat> Um, these would not have different volumes. With this says that the volumes are less. Than, that's not true. So the next one again says that the radii are equal, right? So the volume of cylinder P is greater than. Well, this wouldn't be true either, would it? Because again, um, they do have the same heights. Okay, not the same sand heights, but the same heights. Um, then it says if x is equal to y, again, those are our radii of the volume of p is equal to the volume of cylinder s because the cylinders are the same height. This is our true statement, okay? Let's keep going. Now it's saying if the radius of x is less than the radius of y, the areas of the cross sections of cylinder p is equal to the area of the horizontal cross section of section uh, s. That would not be true, right? Would they be equal here if the radiuses are different? No, that's not true either. Now, again, it says if um, the radius of x is less than the radius of y, the area of a horizontal section of cylinder P, which is the one on the left, is less than the area of a horizontal section of cylinder S. That is a true statement right there, right? Because if the radii are less, then the area has to be less. Now, this last one says if x is less than y, the area of the horizontal cross-section of P is greater. That would not be true, right? The, um, it would be less than, okay? So this is not true. So that's why your answers are C and E.